Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're gonna to talk about memory loss or data loss and why I don't believe in it, specifically for linear regression. Uh, the main reason for this is that you can simply <laughs> build the model differently and actually not have memory loss and address your you know, stationarity issues with differencing. So if you don't understand stationarity fully, there's a ton to it. You could spend a full semester of class just going through this. Uh, I'll have a video at the very end of this video with a little picture you can click on and learn more about it. But let's just dive on in here. Okay, so let's say we have a variable y of t. And so typically we'll have some sort of regression such that we have y of t is equal to alpha, which is going to be an intercept term, plus beta one, x one, plus, you know, yada, 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 all the way out to beta n, x n, plus the error term here, okay? And now we say we need to test y of t for stationarity because stationarity implies it's going to be stable and predictable. And if it's not stable and predictable, we can't build a model for it. So stationarity is a requirement of the modeling process. Specifically here, we're gonna talk about the dependent variable y of t. And let's say we run y of t through the ADF test and we find out that it is non-stationary. So the first thing that we typically do is do y of t minus y of t minus one. So this is called the first difference here. This is now gonna get ran through the stationarity test as a difference. So let's just call this y bar of t. And y bar of t is gonna get ran through the ADF test. And let's say it passes and it is stationary. We call this an I1 process, meaning it has an integration level one. So y of t is stationary when differenced once. And so now let's write the equation again. And typically what I see in practice, which is incorrect, is going to be y bar of t, which is our difference variable, is equal to alpha plus beta one x one plus you know all the other betas to beta n x n plus epsilon of t. And now the argument is is okay. Well, now I have this y bar t, and now I've lost information because I don't have the levels in here. So I made a paper on this, which was quite terrible, trying to wrestle through these ideas because I was at a bank. And I talked to a lot of people in the industry and it seemed like there's this memory loss or data loss going on. And there's really no way around it because we must have stationarity. So what a lot of people do is they just either build a model such that we have Y bar, you know, T, which we just talked about, or they just completely ignore stationarity and just do Y of T and just regress the thing. Both are incorrect. Now, the way to do this is just to do a little bit of algebra. So we're gonna rewrite this and we're gonna say Y T minus Y T minus one is equal to beta one x one plus, you know, all of your betas to beta n x n plus epsilon t. Okay, now note here, you cannot use an alpha to do this correctly. There's, you cannot have an intercept term. This is a easy low hanging fruit finding for validators. And the reason for this is we're gonna use a little algebra here and just rewrite the equation. So y of t is equal to y of t minus one plus beta one x one plus all of your betas to beta n x n plus epsilon t here. So now if you look at this again, the secret here is that your actual y of t minus one is a dynamic intercept term. So again, thinking stochastic processes, stochastic calculus, right? How are these things drawn from a probability space? What we're saying, so you can think about this in a stock kind of format here if you would like, or even an economics format. What we're saying is yesterday's period is extremely predictive and that should be our intercept term. It is not static, it is dynamic. So as we move across time, that stock price is going to bounce around. We're going to say, okay, we're gonna model the differences now in the stock price movement. So if the stock price goes up a little bit, a few pennies, down a few pennies, you can think about percentages, you know, half a percent up, you know, 0.7% down or something. Uh, we want to start with yesterday's stock pr price, which is going to be y of t minus one. And then your beta one, x one, all about to beta and x n is going to be really modeling what's going to drive that change either up or down across time. So this little secret here again, is that we have y of t on the left hand side. Algebraically, this is the same as modeling a difference. So an implementation, when you run this through something like SAS or Python or R, uh, you do the differencing typically by hand. And so you'll have, again, in SAS, the software would load it itself, but in Python and whatnot, you can do y of t minus y of t minus one. You make that the dependent variable. You model the rest of the equation out. So you model those differences. And then in implementation, you just rewrite the implementation code such that y of t is equal to y of t minus one as the intercept plus the rest of the equation. And magically, you do not have information loss because 
guess what? We still have y of t on the left side. We have now a dynamic intercept term, which has logical meaning and sense on the right-hand side. And then the rest of our betas, again, have logical meaning that we're going to be modeling those differences. So this is how you do it. There is no such thing as data loss or information loss when you do linear regression this way. Now, there are other scenarios. For example, maybe you do a machine learning methodology and you do the y of t minus y of t minus one and you do some sort of differencing and you throw out those levels and you don't move them to some other side or you can't you know, gain back that information somehow in the model. Uh, in doing so, you do lose some information and there is a risk with that. But to have stationarity, that is a mandatory bare minimum requirement of any time series model and it must be done. So anyways, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And as always, until next time.